Uh, a nice, solid, hard-fought, unanimous decision win. He's kind enough to join us right now. Let's go to London and say hello to Nathaniel Wood. Hello, Nathaniel. How are you doing? Thanks for the time. I'm very well. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Good it's a pleasure. You. Yes, it's a pleasure. And uh, I know that your uh, your sister got married on, on Monday and you were a little banged up. How were the photos with all the, uh, the wear and tear on the face? Luckily, I had the shades, so that covered the, uh, the black eyes. But I had to wear my UFC sliders, my sandals, because uh, my feet wouldn't fit in the shoes. So oh, my gosh. She, she was a little bit annoyed, but she said, you know, you got the wind, so that's all that matters. And, uh, yeah, it was a good day regardless, so um, it was nice. Just curious, at any point in that 15-minute war, did the thought of your sister's wedding come in your mind for like a brief second, like, oh, man, my sister's going to be mad at me? Did that ever come in, or were you so locked in? She's probably not watching this, so no, okay. it didn't come into my mind. That was the last thing I was worried about. All I was focused on is the fight. So, uh, yeah, in a way, that came first. Okay. Uh, your thoughts on your performance in the fight? Uh, you know, you both hit each other with some heavy shots. Both were rocked. I know you said afterwards the second round, he dazed you quite well. Uh, overall, were you happy with what you did out there? And, and did you think that it was going to be in your favor? It was close, uh, but, you know, it was unanimous in your... In your uh, in, 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 in your favor, did you think that it would be a unanimous decision once they went to the judges' scorecards? Yeah, so I knew in the fight, obviously after the third round, I knew that I had the first and the third round. You know, I knew that the second round, I lost it. There's no way that I'm getting that one. Uh, but I knew without a doubt the first was mine. I was pretty confident that the third was mine as well. Um, so the performance, positive, the pros and the cons, um, you know, obviously I got caught. Um, and a lot of people, you know, have been saying, oh, you haven't got a chin and all that. But if you watch the fight back, most people would have been out from that shot. You know, he landed that hook straight on my jaw, clean as anything. And I was still going, you know, I was still able to fight through it and, and get the win. Um, for me, I'm proud of that. You know, I feel like that's a positive to take. that I can take a dig like that and still win the fight and still keep going. Um... I would have liked to have obviously got him out in the first round when I did catch him. You know, I wanted to put a statement to the UFC that not only can I hang in with the 145ers, I can also finish. And, uh, yeah, I was a bit gutted that obviously I didn't get that. But, you know, three fights at featherweight, three decisions, it's given me plenty of um, octagon time, if you like. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy to get that experience under my um, my belt. And... I would imagine the answer is yes, but just curious because, you know, some of these guys at 145 are big boys. Do you feel 100% certain that 145 is the best weight class for you? 110%. Okay. No, uh, no, and I'm sure you love life, right, at 145 as opposed to 135, right? Yeah, so if I'm honest, mate, it's something I've been thinking of doing for a very long time. I actually fought on Bellator seven years ago at featherweight and won, had no issues whatsoever. It's something that in the gym, I struggle with the flyweights more than I do the featherweights when I was a bantamweight. Wow. And the reason is because the flyweights match my speed. So, of course, if you have a, a Khabib-style opponent, you know, someone that's going to drag you down, lay on you, beat you up, you know, that kind of style, that's a style where yeah, you don't really want to give away too much weight. But when it comes to striking, I feel that being the smaller guy, is the advantage, especially when it comes to the boxing, being in the pocket, you know, punching up as opposed to punching down. It's easier to defend takedowns because being five foot six, like, like Volkanovski, you know, um, my opponents have to, they have to go lower. They have to shoot a lot lower than they would against someone that's five foot 11, let's say. The speed, you know, not only have I got the speed advantage in my hands and kicks on the striking department, my reactions, I just feel are so much quicker when I'm against the featherweights as opposed to, to the flyweight slash bantamweight. So I feel that people look at the weight too much and they kind of forget that, look, you know, weight's great when it comes to the grappling department, but you still have to get the person down. You still have to um, get a hold of them, you know. And if I'm moving around pretty fast and I'm seeing where people are coming from, you know, I feel like I'm in the matrix almost, you know. I feel like I can see things before they've even thrown them. Except for Andre Feely's hook, of course, that uh, that came out of nowhere and got me bad. So, um, but yeah, you know, the proof's in the pudding. I've had three fights at featherweight now, three wins, you know, two dominant wins and one that was a bit of back and forth, you know. And 
I don't feel that in any of those fights have I struggled with anything to do with weight or size. Um, and, mate, I'm able to live a good life and have a proper fight camp. Right. I'm tired of the days where I was killing myself just to make weight. You know, I wasn't even focused on my opponents. All I would be focused on in training is how many calories can I burn, how much weight can I make. And it's not fun, mate. You know, it really isn't. So unless the UFC said to me, you're going to fight 135, but it's going to be a, you know, a million pound fight. It's for the belt. It's something special. I'm not going back down to 135. You know, I'd rather go and get a job and, and, and hang up the gloves because I kind of was despising the sport, if you like. Wow. Um, when I was going to that work. much. You hated it that much that you would walk away. 100%. Yeah. Unless, obviously, it's a uh, big fight, you know, where they say fight once or twice a year. But I like to fight, and I want to fight three, four times a year at least. And I can't do that bantamweight. Mm. For me to make bantamweight was taking me 12 weeks, you know. You saw the video where I had veins all over my body. I must have been 4% body fat. And I still had seven kilos to cut, you know. And I'm not one of these guys that can cut six kilos in water weight, you know. For me to lose three and a half kilos in the sauna, it once took me six and a half hours. And, uh... Jeez. Mate, that was sending anyone mental. You know, that stuff's hard. Now we have the three, and I, I saw what you said before the fight about, like, you know, feeling like you're not really in the mix in the party at 145. Do you feel like you are in the mix now? Do you feel like that was the performance that you needed to get into the mix? Um, I'm not sure. You know, I kind of thought after that fight maybe I'd get ranked. Um, it doesn't look like anything's changed. So I like to think that, you know, people are taking notice of me now, but... I feel that the top 15 will look at me as a risky fight with not enough reward. You know, I think people are chasing them rankings, especially I am. Um, and I think people know that I'm a tough fight. You know, I don't think Feely got enough respect before that fight. You know, I think Feely's a very game, very, very talented fighter. You know, he's been in the UFC for 10 years. And, you know, I think people may be kind of looking past that I just beat him. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I feel like, you know, I'm still kind of getting left out a little bit, but... You know, they can leave me out as long as they like. You know, I know that I'm going to climb that ladder and it's inevitable that, I, that I'm going to get where I need to be. So when the rankings came out yesterday, were you bummed when you weren't on there? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. You know, I know the rankings don't mean tons, you know, and, you know, I don't know how it's worked. Like, yeah. you know, as far as I'm concerned, Andre Feely should have got the decision against Sadiq Yusuf and Sadiq Yusuf's ranked, I think it was 13th or 12th and, you know, I'm not really kind of sure how everything goes on, but, um, yeah, I kind of thought maybe I would have done enough by now, but if not, you know, I'll keep chipping away at it. And, uh, yeah, you know, I never turn an opponent down. So whatever the UFC give me, um, then, then I'll step in there with, uh, you may not like this thought and I will apologize in advance for saying it, but I do feel like the biggest fight next for you is Lerone Murphy. There's just, there's something there with you guys. Uh, does that annoy you? I, I spoke to him on Monday about it. I don't know if you saw any of that. Um, and I, w I wasn't trying to stir the pot. I saw what you said as well about the media. I, I didn't see it, honestly. Okay, yeah, you were busy. But, you, you were, you, I know you had stuff going on with your family, but uh, there's just something there that now I just really want to see you guys fight. Yeah, for sure. That's an exciting fight that I would love to have. Um, it's one that I asked for for this card that had just gone. You know, I never asked for Andre Feedy. I asked for Lerone Murphy. It didn't happen. Um, it's a fight that makes sense, you know, 100%. And I am all for it. Don't think it's going to happen, if I'm honest. I feel that maybe the UFC want us to both kind of work our way up the ladder and then maybe meet. Um, if not, you know, maybe next year, I'm sure they'll come to London again. You know, why can't we do a co-main event or main event, you know, Battle of the Brits, if you like. Mm. Um, obviously, we've got three guys from from England, you know, Arnold Allen, myself, and Lerone Murphy in them featherweight rankings. So why not see who the, the two are out of us, you know? Because I know Arnold Allen's obviously up there in the, in the I think, ranked fourth. Um, so, yeah, you know, me and Lerone, that would be nice. And it would be nice for us to be able to kind of put our monies where our mouths are. And But if it doesn't happen, you know, I kind of wish Lerone all the best now. You know, I'm a little bit past the kind of, animosity if you like i did say see him on the just before the fight and i wished him good luck for his fight and stuff so um i don't feel like there's major bad blood there but if the fight gets matched you know i'm gonna sign it straight away i thought for sure they'd match you guys up 
uh, against each other on Saturday because you were supposed to fight in March, and there you both are on the card, ready to go. Why do you think they didn't do it now? Like, maybe I, I get what you're saying now. Like, maybe now they want to see you guys go in a different direction. But for the build-up to Saturday, why why don't you think they, they booked you guys? I haven't got a clue. The only thing I can think is maybe they want it to make it bigger than what it was. Um, obviously, we had a little kind of debate with each other. It wasn't even really that heated. But straight away, the cameras were on. And I was thinking, you know, where the hell did that camera come yeah. from? Um, so maybe they're, they're hoping that it can be bigger. Maybe it is, you know, I'd like to think that in the UFC's mind, they're thinking, you know, these two could be the main event next year. Let's build it up. Let's make it more special. Whether they actually are thinking about that, I have no idea. You know, maybe they literally just thought, right, Laurent can fight that guy and, and Nath can fight on Jay Felia. I don't know. But, um, that was the fight that me, my manager put forward and said, look, can we get Laurent Murphy? And next thing he was matched with, um, uh, Josh, the guy he just fought. So I'm not sure, you know, honestly. I don't know if obviously Lerone knows any more than I know. Um, but yeah, that's the fight I was asking for. So uh, till this day, you still don't know who filmed that last week? No, I saw the UFC guy. Oh. Like, with the camera. Oh, well. But I, don't, I didn't see what, like me, me and Lerone, we probably was chatting for a couple of minutes before the camera was there. Got it. But literally, obviously, I was kind of in the zone chatting to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And then next thing in the corner of my eye, I'm like, oh, there's a guy with a camera now. And this has just made it yeah. feel like we need to, like, put some stage thing on, which obviously I don't. You know, I'm not yeah. one of these kind of Colby Covington guys. I'm, mate, what you see is what you get. You know, if you see me having a row with someone, you can believe it's it's real. Um, and I'm not going to put it on for the cameras, you know. Uh, did that annoy you that that was filmed? I don't, I wouldn't say it annoyed me, but a part of me thought like, you know, when they were doing it, I was like, there's nothing going on. Yeah. You know, because then I felt like we almost had to put something on, which we didn't, you know, mm -hmm. neither me, me or Lerone, neither one of us kind of played that game. Um, so I feel like they were trying to get something going and obviously we shut them down. So, you know, we didn't play that game, but you know, I, I understand. Oh. Sorry, we still have you for a second. Yeah, um, yeah you know, I, I get it. It's the entertainment business, and that's why my fights. I always, you know, make sure that I, I put on a show to entertain. But yeah, you know, I'm not that kind of less fake talk trash, push each other in the corridors. You know, um, so yeah, I wouldn't say it annoyed me, but I just felt like it was a bit unnecessary. Okay. Yeah, and that's interesting because I feel like he's the same way. Like he doesn't really like the trash mm -hmm. talk and all that stuff. You're 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 both kind of similar in that regard. Uh, I just think I don't like people stirring the pot. Yeah. So I said something at, on one of my interviews, and uh, I'm not sure who it was. A lady interviewer stirred it and went and told him that I said something and kind of changed it. Okay. A little bit, and that's the sort of stuff I don't appreciate because that's not what that's not how I said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I'll always back up what I say. And, you know, I said that me and Lerone both said things to each other that weren't acceptable and both offended each other, whatever, you know, cause you're in the heat at the moment, but don't change the word, how I said it, um, to try and get him to react in a different way. Sure. Because then if he came up to me in a certain manner, thinking that I'd said something differently, I'm going to react in a different way. You know, and I'm not into all that. Would you like for your next fight to be outside of Europe? If I'm honest, I'll always like to stay at home okay. because jet lag affects me, man. I'm a horrible little man when I don't have my sleep. Um, and jet lag does affect me. You know, I, I won't lie. If I'm honest, the two cards that I'm now a bit like, you know, I'd love to be on them. One, the Abu Dhabi card. And that's because I fought on Fight Island twice before and it there was no fans. There was no um, crowd. So I would love to go back there and actually have the people watch me perform. And the Brazil card, man, because I've never been to Brazil. I know mm. I'm going to get some jet lag, but for me, you know, I would love to visit certain countries. Now that I'm not cutting a serious amount of weight, you know, obviously it's a little bit more comfortable. And I'd love to go to Brazil. You know, I've never been there. I've got my wedding coming up next month. So I'm trying to see if I can make a honeymoon into a fight at the same time. Oh my you gosh. know, the missus, obviously, she's not. 100% on that, but if I sort of say to her, oh, we're going to go to Brazil, fight, get paid, then go somewhere else, then for me, that makes her a bit more special. 
Um, and it puts a bit more money in my bank for the honeymoon. So, uh, yeah, they're the two cards that I would like to have. But, yeah, you know, the, close, the closer to home, the better. You know, I have a lot of supporters. I have a lot of friends and family that come to watch my fights. And if I can save them a little bit of money on travel, you know, then uh, I'll make sure to do that. Uh, first of all, congrats on the upcoming wedding. But second of all, to do your Thank honeymoon... You like on the on the back end of a fight that adds a lot of pressure too no like you you know yeah. you want to be in a good mood you want to win right why do you want to have them back to back like that so so what how i thought was like okay if you if we went out to brazil a fight saturday night we stay there for like let's say five nights go to like a really nice resort yeah hopefully with a nice bit of cash in my pocket you know maybe a bonus whatever then we fly somewhere else because I always like to sort of travel about a little bit. You know, I'd like to get a couple of countries in one for a honeymoon kind yeah. of thing. And uh, kind of remind me of when me and my, my fiance went traveling, you know, it's like bringing back memories sort of thing. And uh, yeah, you know, or I'll come home and then go again. But I would like for her to be able to visit these countries with me. You know, obviously Abu Dhabi, she wasn't allowed to come because it was COVID. Um, it would be nice for her to be able to share these experiences. You know, I don't want her in my corner. I don't want her cutting weight with me or doing any of that sort of stuff. But if she could come out and share these experiences with me, um, for me, that would make me very happy. There's a bit of a movement right now saying, hey, the UFC needs to get out of London. Uh, they've oversaturated it. Maybe go to Manchester, go to... Uh you know, Newcastle, go to Dublin, go to Glasgow. How do you, as, as a proud uh, Londoner, how do you feel about this? Is it Londoner or Londonite? I think it's Londoner, right? Londoner. Okay, yeah, Londoner. Yeah. Uh, uh, so for me, I don't feel that they have saturated it. I feel that the card that we just had was nowhere near as good as the two cards before, which is why I think a lot of people moaned about it. You know, a lot of people moaning about the ticket prices because they were the same as, Leon Edwards versus, versus Kamara Usman, you know. So I don't think it's that London's saturated at all because the tickets sell out instantly. I just think that maybe the card on the weekend wasn't necessarily what people were hoping for. Um, but I do think it would be great if they went to Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, etc. So for me, I feel that they should, they could do as many as they like in a year. They would sell it out, no problem. So for me, I would be like, you know, if I was the UFC, I'd think, okay, let's go to let's go to the UK four times a year. You know, why not? Um, maybe Dublin, somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. Ireland, in the you know, maybe Scotland, something like that would be cool uh, because I'm technically at home still, even though you know I'm gonna have to stay there and stuff. But I don't think London's saturated at all. I just think maybe the card was nowhere near as big as that Leon Edwards Kamara Usman right. card. Uh, by the way, what are we going to do about the nickname? You're not a prospect anymore. Like you, you are here. Rankings or not, what are we going to? Uh, this is kind of like Faber. He wasn't a kid anymore, but he's. Are, are we just going to stick with it till the end? I'm going to have to. I've started two businesses off that name. Oh so, my gosh! Uh, I've spent too much money, man. I'm going to be the oldest prospect in the game. <laughs> but yeah, I might have to change it to the comeback kid or something like that because I keep uh, having to come back from these fights. But um, yeah, you know, for now, I'm going to stick with it. Maybe when I become UFC champ, I might change it. What What are the two businesses? So during my injury, you know, I thought it's you got I got to start businesses, man. You know, the UFC pay great, but if I don't fight, I don't get paid. So yeah. I started one a clothing company, which is the Prospect Apparel. Um, I started that with a friend from of mine from school, and that's actually been going a while now. But that was more something just to keep my mental health just focused on something because I felt like in between training, there was too many hours in the day where I was just, you know, just letting my mind go away with the fairies and just ending up in depressive states. So that's one of them. And then the other one, I've got the Prospect Academy, which is an online tutorial um, where people can train with me, but not just me, my whole team. So we've got everyone, my strength coach, Brad Pickham, you know, Ashley Grimshaw, my jiu-jitsu coach, um, you name it, we got it. We've got my yoga instructor, my nutritionist, and all of that for five pounds a month. Wow. You know? um, and the idea is I don't need to make money from these businesses yet. You know, what I want to do is create something where in eight years' time, when I retire, I've got something to fall back on because that scares the hell out of me. You know, when when I retire, when I get injured, I don't get paid. Right. Um, so yeah, these for me are like my retirement plans, if you like. You know, I plant the seed now and hopefully. You know, by the time I retire, they've um, blossomed into a nice, 
money tree that I can fall back on. I um, love that. Very forward thinking of you. And the uh, the apparel store is top notch. Like this isn't your typical fighter sort of cheap stuff. It's very it's very nice. The store is very. I checked it out. It's uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's really really nice stuff. I'm 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 trying to create something that doesn't need me to sell it. You know. So that's why with the academy. I don't want it to just be about me. I want it to be about my, my my whole team. You know, if you want to train with a UFC fight team, you can do that. Whereas most fighters, I think, usually do their own kind of online tutorial. Mm. But I don't want it to just be about me. You know, I want to bring people in that want to train with my coaches, you know, that might not have access to it. Uh, with the prospect apparel, you know, I purposely am trying to hire other models to to represent the brand because i want the brand to sell itself i don't want it to just be about me you know mm-hmm. i don't want it to be right that's a cheap t-shirt but because it says my name on it someone's going to buy it i want it to be a quality brand where someone's going to buy it because of the material and how it fits not just because it's my brand so uh yeah it's early days yet but you know i've got plenty of time on my side and you know it keeps keeps me busy man and that's the main thing and by the way are you sponsored by a lightsaber company Yes, had a one outpost. What is going? Mate, what is a light? How, wh- these guys. What is going? <laughs> these. I'm not a massive Star Wars fan, but these guys, and I saw their lightsabers, and mate, it is special. You know, these aren't kids' toys. These okay. aren't like kids' lightsabers. These are like solid metal. Mate, do you know what? I'll, I'm I'm sure they'll send you one out if it if you've something you was happy to have. But they are cool as fuck, mate. They are so cool. What do you use it for? Just a light, really. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I, mate, I'm waving it around in the house all the time. Wow. I? I'm, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a Jedi now. You know, if you take this thing out at nighttime, it lights the road up. It wow. is, they're expensive, you know, they're not cheap. And uh, they luckily, reach out to you, know, you? The guys, yeah, they, funny enough, I've, we've got a friend, mutual friend. I went to Comic Con with one of my friends, which when he said he'd taken me Comic Con, I was like, come on, man, you know, I'm not going there. Anyway, I went along. They saw me and said, mate, please tell your mate not to buy a lightsaber today. We'll give him one. We'll come to the gym next week. They live local to me. And uh, he said about sponsorship. So here I am now, and I'm sponsored by Jedi's. That's so, awesome. Uh, it's a cool thing, man. You know, it is. And um, they're, they're a bit of a success story, you know. So um, they, had a hard, they had some hard times, and now they're, you know, they're doing very, very well. I love that. Uh, just like you and uh, your fight career now with three wins in a row. So it's all apropos. Uh, congrats on the win, That's Nathaniel. It. What a great performance. What a great fight that was. Really, really great. One of the best of the night. And uh, looking forward to what's next. And hopefully you get that fight after the wedding, of course, in uh, in, in Brazil. That would be tremendous. And uh, obviously staying in the UK and in Europe, uh, you're a big star over there. So that makes all the sense in the world. Appreciate you doing this. Congrats again. And, and good luck with the upcoming wedding. Congrats on that as well. Thank you. I need it. It's expensive. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. All right. There he is. Nathaniel Wood. Uh, still the prospect, 